You are going to file a case. You went to a lawyer. You told the lawyer your problem. Attorney, I will file a case against Marites. You told the lawyer everything that happened. Take my money, attorney. The next day, you went back to the lawyer. Attorney, have you filed the case yet? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't do this. This is why you need the Rule 7 of the Rules of Court to file a case. There must be a pleading, and the pleading has parts and contents. Here's everything you should know about parts and contents of a pleading. Rule 7 of the 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure or the AM number 19-10-20 provides for the parts and contents of a pleading. Section 1, Rule 7 of the 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure or the AM number 19-10-20 provides for the rule on the contents of the caption in the pleading. It states that, the caption sets forth the name of the court, the title of the action, and the docket number, if assigned. The title of the action indicates the names of the parties. They shall all be names in the original complaint or petition, but in the subsequent pleading, it shall be sufficient if the names of the party on each side be stated with an appropriate indication when there are other parties. Their respective participation on the case shall be indicated. Here's a sample of what the caption of a pleading looks like. Pause the video so you can look at it properly. Now, what are the contents of a caption of a pleading? Name of the court, title of the action, and the docket number if assigned. The name of the court forms like an inverted triangle. From the bottom up, you start from the smallest to the largest. The city, the branch number if there is already a branch number, the name of the tribunal, the judicial region where the court belongs, and the Republic of the Philippines. Now, the title of the action indicates the names of the parties. It is a mandate that the parties involve the names in the pleading with their respective participation in the case. In the sample, Mr. X is the plaintiff while Mr. Y is the defendant. And lastly, the docket number. The docket number should be left blank in the first filing until the court assigns a docket number. Under the docket number is the name of the action that the plaintiff is going to file against the defendant. In this sample, it's ejection. Remember, ejectment, not ejection. Section 2 Rule 7 of 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure or the AM number 19-10-20 provides for the rules in the contents of the body of the pleading. It states that Section 2, the body of the pleading, sets forth its designation, the allegations of the party's claim or defenses, the relief, prayed for, and the date of the pleadings. In the paragraphs, the allegation in the body of the pleadings shall be divided into paragraphs so numbered as to be readily identified, each of which shall contain a statement of a single set of circumstances so far as that can be done with the convenience. A paragraph may be referred to by its number in all succeeding pleadings. In the hearings, when two or more causes of actions are joined, the statement of the first shall be prefaced by the words, first cause of action, of the second by, second cause of action, and so on for the others. When one of more paragraph is the answer is addressed to one of the several causes of action in the complaint this shall be prefaced by the words answer to the first cause of action or answer to the second cause of action and so on and when one or more paragraphs of the answer are addressed to several causes of action they shall be prefaced by words and that effect in the relief the pleading shall specify the relief sought but it may add a general prayer for such a pardon or other relief as may be deemed just or equitable. In the date, every pleading shall be dated. This is what the body of the pleading looks like. You can pause the video so you can read it properly. 
in the body there's d the designations the allegation of the party's claim or the defenses the relief prayed for and the date of the pleading so the allegations are divided into paragraphs with numbers to be easily identified each of which shall contain a statement of a single set of circumstances for convenience how can this convenience be applied for instance in answering the complaint it's easier for the defendant to cite the paragraphs example in a paragraph 4 of the complaint the plaintiff alleged that the defendant had occupied the premises for over 10 years. The defendant has been occupying the premises for 5 years. Question. Is there is a punishment if there is a failure to number the paragraphs in the pleading? No, because it is not provided in section to rule 7 of the rules of court, but wouldn't it be convenient if the paragraphs were already numbered? Remember. Pleadings are legal documents filed in court. They are not mere essays or any literary output. There is a required form. Note that allegations in the complaint determine the nature of the case, not the caption. That's the paragraph part of the body of the pleading. Next is the heading. The designations are the headings of causes of actions joined in one complaint. Headings shall be made as follows. When two or more causes of action are joined, the statement of the first shall be prefaced by the words first cause of action, of the second by, second cause of action, and so on for the others. When one or more paragraphs in the answer are addressed to one several causes of action in the complaint, they shall be prefaced by the words answer the first cause of action or answer of the second cause of action and so on and when one or more paragraphs of the answers are addressed to several causes of action they shall be prefaced by words to that effect the relief is the prayer following the averments of the cause of action of the plaintiff the complaint must contain a statement of the relief suit from the court and to which he believes he is entitled the relief suit should be specific but the pleader may also be allowed to include a general prayer. This is what a prayer in a pleading looks like. Question. Can courts grant relief not prayed for in the pleading? The answer is no. Courts cannot grant a relief not prayed for in the pleading or in excess of what is being sought by the party. But if a general prayer is stated, Courts can award relief supported by the complaint or other pleadings, even if these are not specifically prayed for in the complaint. Lastly, the date of the pleading in the body of the pleading. Simply put the date of the date, the pleading, like this. Section 3, Rule 7 of the 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure or the AM number 19-10-20 provides for the rules on signatures and address in the pleading. It states that Section 3, Signature and Address Every pleading and other written submissions to the court must be signed by the party or counsel representing him or her. The signature of the counsel constitutes a certificate by him or her that he or she read the pleading and the document that to the best of his or her knowledge, information and belief formed after an inquiry reasonable under the circumstances, it is not being presented for any improper purpose, such as to harass, cause unnecessary delay, or needlessly increase the cost of litigation. The claims, defenses, and other legal contentions are warranted by existing law or jurisprudence or by a non-frivolous argument or extending modifying or reversing existing jurisprudence. The factual contentions have evidentiary support or, if specifically so identified, will likely have evidentiary support after availment of the modes of discovery under these rules. And the denials of factual contentions are warranted on the evidence or, if specifically identified, are reasonable based on belief or a lack of information. This is what it looks like.
warning what will happen if the pleading does not have a verification. If the court determines on motion or moto proprio, after notice and hearing that this rule has been violated, it may impose an appropriate sanction or refer such violation to the proper office for disciplinary action on any attorney, law firm, or party that violated the rule or is responsible for the violation. Absent any exceptional circumstances, a law firm shall be held jointly and severally liable for a violation committed by its partner, associate, or employee. The sanction may include but shall not be limited to non-monetary directive or sanction, an order to pay a penalty in court or imposed on motion and warranted for effective deterrence and ordering directing payment to the movement of part or all of the reasonable attorney's fees and other expenses directly resulting from the violation, including attorney's fees for the filing of the motion for sanction. Take note, the lawyer or law firm cannot pass the monetary penalty to the client. Is that clear? Now, Section 4, Rule 7 of the 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules of Civil Procedure or the AM number 19-10-20 provides for the rules on verification of pleadings. It states that Section 4 verification, except when otherwise specifically required by law or rule, pleadings need not be under oath or verified. A pleading is verified by an affidavit of an affiant duly authorized to sign said verification. The authorization of the affiant to act on behalf of a party, whether in a form of a secretary certificate or a special power of attorney, should be attached to the pleading and shall allege the following attestations. The allegations in the pleading are true and correct based on his or her personal knowledge or based on authentic documents. The pleading is not filed to harass cause unnecessary delay or needlessly increase to the cost of litigation. And the factual allegations therein have evidentiary support or, if specifically so identified, will likewise have evidentiary support after a reasonable opportunity for discovery. The signature of the affiant shall further serve as a certification of the truthfulness of the allegations in the pleading. The pleading required to be verified that contains a verification based on a pleading required to be verified that contains a verification based on information and belief or upon knowledge, information and belief or lack lacks of a proper verification shall be treated as unsigned pleading. This is what a verification looks like. The verification should be signed by a duly authorized person. Who are these authorized persons? Aside from the pleader, the pleader's representative, lawyer, or any person who personally knows the truth of the facts alleged in the pleadings may sign the verification. Note that the pleader's representative should have secretary certificate or a special power of attorney in order to have authority to sign the verification. What will happen if the person who signed the verification has no authority to do so? The case will be dismissed since the court has no jurisdiction over the complainant and the plaintiff. What if the complaint lacks verification? The court may order the correction of the pleading if the verification is lacking or act on the pleading although it is not verified. Another question, is it required to state in the verification a praise, personal knowledge or authentic records? Yes, it is required to be stated in the verification. What are the pleadings that should be verified under the rules and law? Here are the list of pleadings that should be verified under the law or rules. Here are also responsive pleadings that should be verified or under oath. Some motions or applications should also be verified or under oath. Since verification is an oath, it needs to be notarized. Section 5, Rule 7 of the 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure or the AM Number 19-10-20 
provides for the rule on forum shopping and certification against forum shopping. It states that Section 5, Certificate Against Forum Shopping The plaintiff or principal party shall certify under oath in the complaint or other initiatory pleading asserting a claim of relief or in a sworn certification annexed thereto and simultaneously filed therewith a. That he or she has not therefore commenced any action or filed any claim involving the same issue in any court, tribunal, or quasi-judicial agency, and to the best of his or her knowledge, no other action or claim is pending therein. b. If there is such other pending action or claim, a complete statement of present status thereof, and c. If he or she should thereafter learn that the same or similar action claim has been filed or is pending, he or she shall report that fact within five calendar days therefrom to the court wherein his or her aforesaid complaint or initiatory pleading has been filed. The authorization of the affiant to act on behalf of a party, whether in the form of a secretary certificate or a special power of attorney, should be attached to the pleading. Failure to comply with the foregoing requirements shall not be curable by mere amendment of the complaint or other initiatory pleading, but shall be cause for the dismissal of the case without prejudice, unless otherwise provided, upon motion or and after hearing. The submission of a full certification or non-compliance with any of the undertakings therein shall constitute indirect contempt of the court without prejudice to the corresponding administrative and criminal actions. If the acts of the party or his or her counsel clearly constitute willful and deliberate forum shopping, the same shall be ground for summary dismissal with prejudice and shall constitute direct contempt, as well as cause for administrative sanctions. Now, this is what a certificate of non-forum shopping looks like. The verification and certification of non-forum shopping and certificate against non-forum shopping is merged in a single form like this. Section 6, Rule 7 of 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure are the AM number 19-10-20 provides for the rule on additional contents of pleadings. It states that every pleading stating a party's claim or defenses shall in addition to those mandated by Section 2, Rule 7, state the following. Names of the witnesses will be presented to prove a party's claim or defense. Summary of witnesses intended to testimonies, provided that the judicial affidavits of said witnesses shall be attached to the pleading and form but integral part thereof. Only witnesses those judicial affidavit are attached to the pleading shall be presented by the parties during trial except if a party present meritorious reason as basis for the admission of the additional witnesses no other witnesses or affidavit shall be heard or admitted by the court and documentary and object evidence is support in support of the allegation in the pleading under the judicial affidavit rule, the attachments of documentary or object evidence to the affidavits is required when we, when there would be a pretrial or preliminary conference or the scheduled hearing. In our sample pleading, the documentary or object evidence should be labeled as annex or exhibit. If the documentary object evidence are from the plaintiff, alphabets are used. If the documentary object evidence come from the defendant, numbers are used. Aside from the aforementioned parts and contents, lawyers take note of these additional requirements in the pleading. All pleadings, motion, and papers filed in the court by counsel should bear their professional tax receipt number, IDP number, mandatory continuing legal education certification of compliance or exemption, Rule number competent evidence of identity in jurat, pleadings, motion, and papers without PTR number and IBP number may not be acted upon by the court without prejudice to whatever the disciplinary action the court may take against the hearing counsel, which shall likewise be required to comply with the requirements within five days from the notice. Failure to disclose the number and date of the issue of the MCLE 
certificates of their compliance or certificates of the exemption in the pleadings would subject to counsel to appropriate penalty and disciplinary action and the lawyer shall be imposed a fine of 2000 for the first offense 3000 for the second offense and 4000 for the third offense in addition to the fine counsel may be listed as a delinquent member of the bar pursuant to section 2 rule 13 of bar matter number 850 and its implementing rules and regulations and the non-compliant lawyer shall be discharged from the case and the client shall be allowed to secure the services of a new counsel with the concomitant right to demand the return of fees already paid to the non-compliant lawyer. This is under the amendatory OCA Circular Number 79-2014 pursuant to the resolution on Bank of the Supreme Court dated January 14, 2014. Lastly, the rule number of the attorney in the pleading is only meant to protect the public by making it easier to detect imposters who represent themselves as members of the bar. Then compliance with this requirement has the same effect as the failure to indicate counsel's IBP receipt number. And those are the parts and contents of a pleading. Let's review the caption. In the caption is the name of the court, title of action, docket number. In the body are the paragraphs, headings, relief, and date, the signature and address, verification, certificate against forum shopping. Now, now you have, have a good pleading to file your case. case.